This video is brought to you by Let's Synthesize Academy, the number one place for practice-oriented courses for serious music producers. Hey, Dan Larson here. Welcome to the newest Synthesize Sunday episode. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about side chaining. Now, side chaining is a lot more important thing than you might think. It's just, you know, for the groove, you know, for the pumping effect. If you want to achieve some really nice, clean mix down, especially on the drums, if you want to achieve like clean and punchy drums, side chaining is the essential tool. So come with me. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about this topic through this little groove. Okay, so first of all, the first thing that I want to talk about is what not to use for side chaining, and that is a compressor. Honestly, I don't like to use compressor for side chaining because it affects our sound in a way that I don't really like. So you don't want to compress your sound, or if you don't want to compress your sound, only just docking that part you want to re just you know remove from the sound. Compressor is not the best and not the most ideal way to use. So just simply don't use compressors. Okay, so what I would suggest you is to use a volume shaper or LFO tool or anything similar, you know, that does the same. Basically, it just ducks your volume. Now you can do this manually, for example, in Ableton, just use a utility tool and, you know, automate the volume knob on it. This is a little time consuming, but if you are on a budget, this is a very nice thing to have. Okay, so now you have the tool that you really want to just use. Now let's talk about the purposes of side chaining. So the first thing that you want to achieve, like a sound that made famous by Benny Benassi's Satisfaction, if I remember well, that is the first song. You know, a regular sidechain or a regular uh, ducking kind of thing is more than enough. But if you want to step further and you don't want to duck the whole sound, only just, you know, a certain frequency range, you need to step forward and you need to use a multi-band sidechain effect or multi-band sh uh, sh volume shaper or whatever it is called. And you may ask, why would I use that? Now, the first thing is, if you don't want to achieve that very hard ducking sound, which honestly I'm not a big fan of that, you just want to cut the low end of your sound, you know, to make room for your kick. And that way you won't perceive that ducking effect, but you can make a whole lot of difference in the final mix down. Your drums will be able to cut through the mix a lot better and everything will be just a lot snappier and punchier. Okay, but what about if you are a bass heavy producer and your kick drums or even your snare drums have cool and very harsh and very loud transient? You know, the transients are very high frequency focused. So you really want to take care of the high frequencies at the same time. So you don't only want to just dug the very low end of your bass sounds, but maybe you should care about the very highs. Because, you know, most of these bass sounds have lots of lots of high frequencies. So this is where this little dude, the chain shaper, comes handy. Let me show you how to use that. Okay, so as I showed you this little groove, If you want to learn more about audio production, click here. So the bass sequence contains lots of high frequencies, so what I would do is just use an EQ8 and chop off the very highs. So for the next thing, just drop this little Max for Live plugin, which honestly I really, really like. So this is a chain shaper, it is called chain shaper, so basically this is a volume shaper kind of thing but what is cool here is if you click on this knob you can set up different settings for three different bands so you can set different settings for the low end for the middle band and for the high end it's a very very nice thing and the next thing that i really like is you can set the input so let's go to drum rack this is where my drums are and you can set the input for example, I just want to use my kick. So the visual representation is very, very nice here. I can see the kick and when I see the kick, I can hear the ducking effect. For example, with other plugins, it's a lot harder, you know, to set up everything uh, for the input to control your ducking effect but with this little tool it is very very simple and the most awesome tool as i showed you before is the multi-band thing so as i just told you if you want to achieve a nice mix down you really want to do the following so 
cut the very lows. Okay, for example, I don't know, between 0 and 500 Hz. But what about the higher frequencies? So if you want to avoid that ducking effect or just want to have a slight ducking effect on your sound, I would say you really want to leave the middle frequencies untouched or just ap applying a very slight effect. But with the high frequencies, what I want to do is just cut a very very short amount of time, a short amount of time as short as the transients of your drums are. And with Chain Shaper it is very easy to do, let me show you. So first of all you need to activate the low band and set the length of your side chaining effect. If you don't really hear the difference just click on this headphones icon and you can audition only the low band. By adjusting the low crossover I can clearly hear what it does. But as I told you, let's just leave it like, I don't know, 500 Hz. But before we go forward, let me encourage you to subscribe for weekly awesome tutorials on music production. So this will create some enough room for your drums and for your basses to play together. Let's activate the middle band. And on the middle band, I don't want to dock too much. Just let's go to just the minimum, you know. Maybe we can disable it. If you don't want to use, that's totally okay. Okay, but on the high crossover, what I want to do is to chop off the high frequencies to make some room for the transient to cut through. This is again a very important thing, so let's just leave on a very short curve. So let's audition it. You can hear how it ducks only the high frequencies because right now I'm auditioning only the high frequencies. So I think this length on the curve will be enough. And all together with the drums. Now if you want to do the same with the snare, just drop another instance of Chase Shaper and set everything from drum rack on the snare post FX. This is what I want to do. And you know, you can set up the same thing, but personalize it to the snare drum. So as you can see, side chaining is a lot more than just mentally ill, you know, ducking the whole volume on your bass loops or, or your any other instrument group. What you want to focus on is the frequency ranges of your instrument especially on the lows to make room for your kick and snare and on the very highs to clean up the transient. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, drop a thumbs up and subscribe for my channel for weekly awesome videos and see you guys next time.